Hello, my furniture refinishing friends. This is Shannon with Black Sheep House. Today's video, I have this really cool dresser here that I got off Facebook Market. It looks like somebody already tried to do a bit of refinishing of it. Did the uh, wood filler here and some of the holes. And then <laughs> some of the drawers are in the wrong spots. I'm gonna need to rearrange that. This may be this dresser's second or third attempt at somebody trying to refinish it because this doesn't look like a factory finish here to me but it's got a pretty deep scratch right there and this finish scraping off peeling off even life is a winding road no telling where it goes Oh, nice wood, clean drawers, really clean. The sides are dovetail. You can't see it very well, but it, they are dovetail. Wood slides, nice and clean in here. This is gonna be a good project. Let's put a crack here. My mind, I will keep on holding my head high, even if the sky is falling down. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is sand this thing, the sand the top down with some 120. My sander, you guys know I love this thing. All right, we're gonna double mask then. How about that? I don't know what I was thinking trying to do this with 120, but it was gumming up on me. It was terrible, big mess. And I switched over to 80 grit and never looked back. <laughs> After removing the finish with the 80 grit, I went through with the higher grits and eventually did a 320 at the very last to get a nice smooth finish. I'm going to use a nail to mark out the lines that I'm trying to cut into the bottom here to create that more modern looking base. Alright, so I got the Ryobi jigsaw. I'm going to use that. Or you could use like a multi-tool, that's what I did for the sides already. This is so much easier than the multi-tool. Like this was so fast. It took me forever with the multi-tool, so I don't know if I'll ever go back, actually. Maybe I'll just keep it for some cases, but this was working definitely a lot better. Just enjoy the ride. 
I'm trying to modernize the bass, obviously, and you can see there's a, a lot of uh, peak right here on this a little bit more ornate bass, um, even though the sides were just nice and flat. So after I was able to cut those, um, I just was dealing with this. So then I decided to uh, sand it down, and so I've just been trying to sand it down with 80 grit and soften those peaks you can see done a pretty good job it's still going to have a little bit of curve to it but overall it's going to look a lot more uh, modern and uh, sell for a lot more in my market <laughs> all right so you've got this stuff Cross your fingers and hope this works, but I'm hoping this wood filler that I'm shoving in the grooves here not only makes the surface more flat, which I'm going for, but also uh, hides the part of the stained wood so I don't have to sand in those crevices and save me some time here. It's a perfect match and I got this from Ace Hardware. It's a really good dupe for Famo wood is the Ace Hardware brand. All right, next up, we're gonna be mixing up a batch of my one-step paint recipe, and I've tinkered with this over the years and found that this particular version of the recipe is my favorite. The first thing you'll need is just any kind of paint. You can use just regular latex paint, house paint, just needs to be water-based. I'm using Sherwin-Williams cashmere that I have left over from another project. Then you're gonna need some primer. Again, water-based is necessary, and then some water-based clear coat you can use polyacrylic you can use polyurethane which is my favorite and this is actually my favorite brand of polyurethane i get this on amazon in a big gallon and then to because it's going to be a little bit shiny this is a satin finish and this is a semi-gloss or a satin at least um, to make it a little less shiny and to give it a little bit more grab so it sticks to the furniture I am going to be using some calcium carbonate aka chalk powder right i get this off amazon as well and I do need a little bit of water to make that work. A lot of people ask when I've shared this recipe before, will it lighten the paint color? And the answer is yes, it will lighten the paint color. So this isn't ideal for anything that is a black or a navy, something that you need to stay dark, then this recipe will not work. I have not solved that problem yet. But if you don't mind having a little bit of variation in your color, like I don't mind that this is gonna be a little lighter green, then this recipe is perfect and will save you a lot of money. I like to um, use a mason jar of sorts and then you just want equal parts paint, primer, and poly and then half part of the um, calcium carbonate and I'm going to make it equal parts by adding a little bit of water. I think distilled water is probably the best but I just had some bottled water here. And I like to mix that up first together um, so that it just is a less gritty feel. So if you just throw in the chalk paint, I mean the chalk powder, it will be a little... Oops. Kind of turned into mud on the bottom. You can see it's kind of getting there. All right. So 
I'm just going to throw in the paint. And the primer. Water-based polyurethane. Got that in the comments a lot too. You know, oh, I thought water, I thought polyurethane couldn't be mixed with water-based products, but this is a water-based polyurethane. So I'm going to give that a mix before adding in the calcium carbonate mixed with water. Ooh, that's a pretty color. I like that. That's really pretty. All right, and then we'll add in the calcium carbonate. This is optional. You don't have to throw in the calcium carbonate, but I do like a more matte finish, and it does help a little bit with adhesion. People ask a lot too, do you need a top coat for this paint? Because I'm calling it a one-step paint recipe. Um, and that the answer to that is it really depends on what kind of paint you use as your base and what sheens. Like if you're using a semi-gloss paint that's pretty durable on its own, then you probably won't need a clear coat. But if you used a sample paint, you know, from Home Depot that is flat, then you'll definitely need a top coat. And it also depends on what kind of um, item you're going to be painting, you know. I wouldn't use this for cabinets or a tabletop, but this is great for dressers and nightstands and things like that. Oh, I really like that color. Right, let's see how this looks. Oh, pretty. Very nice. I'm gonna do brush and roll, of course. Just going through with a foam roller. this little brush here for the in-betweens and I won't roll this I'll just leave it usually by the time I'm done with one coat I'm ready to apply the next coat and I can just keep going with the same brush and roller until I'm completely done and it takes about three coats to get the coverage that I'm looking for and then here's the texture it's got a little bit more of that fusion mineral paint chalk paint texture versus an oil enriched enamel or something along those lines okay, let's see how this line looks Ooh. So this drawer, when you pull it out, you can see how it's it's not doing what we want it to, right? It's flipping like forward and that is because if you look up here out, see how there's nothing there but on this side there's this little track kind of looking thing this board this is what's keeping the other drawer from doing that same thing so we've got to install something really similar to this on the top here so that we don't get that 
drawer falling out. I just had a little scrap piece of wood that I threw up there. It was just a, actually a piece of an old bunk, an Ikea bunk bed actually that we just kept because we always keep scrap wood. And then I've got just a weird little thing here to keep it up to the top. And it wasn't the right length and I could have cut it, you know, and made it all proper and stuff. But honestly, this diagonal, uh, way it works just fine and and it did the exact same thing when i tested it out so that is a little hack for you too all right so i'm going to take this white wax and barely have any left but i'm gonna just put that on this wood just to give it a little bit of protection obviously it's like you know it's not going to be used like a dining room table or something but this white wax is really nice it, you know it doesn't really change the color at all it gives it a little bit of white in some of the grooves and it's just a nice and then I'm just gonna do the same thing down here and even on that wood filler it's just the perfect little camouflage for blending the wood filler and the wood together and keeping the wood nice and light. If you get a little too much on, you can kind of dab it off with your with a microfiber cloth. Well, this is just some gauze I've got. You know, I had a bunch of this extra laying around and I've been using it. You could use a microfiber cloth, a t-shirt, whatever you got. You guys have seen me use just about anything. And isn't that nice? You know, just, you can play around with how much you want the white to show up. Like see there, it's showing up quite a bit. But if you know, you wipe it back, then you're gonna get more of just the, the wood. Ooh, okay, it's time to do the reveal. Let's take a look at this before. Nice solid wood dresser and ta-da! <laughs> This is the after. Guys, I am just shook right now. The base looks so good. That wood filler, you can't even tell hardly at all. I mean, you could barely see it in there. And then I was nervous that because there's 20 knobs on this piece, even with the holes that I filled, I was nervous it was gonna look like a cow with udders. <laughs> but it looks so good. I'm really happy with this project. The top feels like butter. You just want to rub your hands all over the top of it. I'm just really proud of this and super happy with how it turned out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.